Shark Nation. What's good, man? How you feeling? How you doing? And welcome back. I might see 33,000 to be exact. And listen, we got another episode of the Seattle Blue Shark Dynasty, and we are finally in season three. But before we go any further, man, I just want to give a huge thank you to the Shark Nation, man, the Shark Faithful. We are now over 500 subs. And I'm so grateful. I'm so thankful I couldn't do it without you. But I know you've been waiting, so let's get into it, man. Last time we talked, we had some breaking news. The Seattle scandal. We learned of players who were not enrolled at the school, man. NCAA handed down sanctions to our beloved school. But thankfully, man, the Sharks will continue their journey in the ACC. So listen, man, this is where we start our journey in season three. And as we learn of the scandal, man, we also learned about a new school that's going to be in the ACC, the Beaumont Black Panthers. So this year, the ACC is getting a little facelift. Seattle and the new school are all going to be joining the mix, man. So we got a whole lot of good teams here. And we got a whole lot to get into, so let's get to it. So look, man, as we embark on this new journey, there are a couple things you need to know. Number one, Seattle will replace Boston College in the ACC, and Beaumont University will replace Stanford. If you love those schools, so sorry, but this is not the place for you. But anyway, man, it is time to get a look at the Sharks' upcoming schedule. And this is our first year in the ACC. We got to make our mark. So here we go, man. As we get into it, you can see week zero, we're just going to have a bye week. You know, we need to get a chance to catch our breath, to let the dust settle from everything that's happened last season. But then we get right to it in week one and we come and try and make our mark. Florida State on the road, Dope Campbell Stadium. This is gonna be a tough game, let me tell you, man. Last year, Florida State goes 10 and three. They are currently the 11th ranked team in the nation. And not only are they a powerhouse football team, but their home stadium, their fans, their crowd, their student section is electric. And it's something we'll definitely have to pay attention to as we get ready for that game, man. Then in week two, we play UNLV. This is going to be our first home game. And this is also where we are going to unveil a brand new stadium. You know, we got the letter from the board last season. Didn't quite get to finish the season, but they have so graciously awarded us with a brand new stadium. So this is going to be a whole lot of fun, man. It's going to be a good game. It's going to be a game that you definitely want to make sure that you are in attendance too, man. You want to see the unveiling of the new stadium. But then, man, in week three, we go back on the road and face off against BYU. And this team is pretty good, man. Eight and five last year. And this team is up in the mountains. You got to deal with that atmosphere. We're going to have to deal with a whole lot of blue in the stadium. So this right here, we're going to mark as Battle of the Blues, man. We're looking forward to this matchup. It should definitely be a good one, man. So we're going to check that one on our calendars as we get ready to face off against BYU. Then in week four, we go dip our toe in the Big Ten. Got to go talk to Michigan State. And uh, they're actually going to come to Seattle, man. So this is going to be another matchup that we're going to look forward to. Big Ten, a whole lot of muscle, a whole lot of power. Then week five, man, we face off against San Jose State. And that's going to be back-to-back -back home games for us. And let's be honest, we feel good about this matchup. And hopefully, if things go well against Michigan State, we get back-to-back -back wins at home. You got to protect home if we want to be anywhere in that playoff race come the end of the year, man. So then in week six, we get into our conference schedules, man. Our conference matchup, we see Virginia. And we're going to go down to Scott Stadium and hopefully get a dub there, man. That's another team we feel good about. But we're not counting any chickens before they hatch because anything can happen, as you already know, man. So then after a accelerated start to the season, man, we finally get a bye week in week seven, and then we get right back to it in week eight going against Virginia Tech. So we're going to stay in Virginia, man. We're going to go to Lane Stadium, and you already know the atmosphere there is top notch. The crowd is definitely going to be a factor, although their team is kind of on the rebuild. But hey, at this point, so are we. But anyway, man, that's going to be a good matchup at Lane Stadium, man. Virginia Tech Hokies, you better be ready to play them Sharks because we got something to prove. You feel me? Then, man, in week nine, we got another tough matchup. The number 20 ranked Louisville Cardinals, man. They come to Seattle. And this right here is going to be another tough matchup. This is a team that's been building and they've been consistently good, you know, for the past few years going eight, nine last year. So this is a game we're definitely going to have to be prepared for and lace some shoes up tight, man. It's going to be a definite battle. But uh, we'll be ready for him, man. So then after that, we are going to go into another bye week, week 10. And then week 11, we're going to get into some more conference play, man. We're going to see Syracuse. They went 7-6 and six last year, man, had a decent record. And they are marked as our rivals, man. And like I said, that is because we took over Boston College. So we also take on the rivalry. But listen, we ain't ducking no smoke, man. If Syracuse really want it, they know where to find us. So then, man, we take a trip to the south, man. We go down to Dallas to face off against SMU. And this is another 7-6 team, man. So I already told you this ACC conference is full of good teams, full of good competition. Speaking of good competition, week 13, 
We play North Carolina. Now, we already had a little run-in with North Carolina, so they know exactly who we are. But we're going to face off against them again in Season 3. And hopefully we get the same result as last time we played them because we did get the dub, if you know what I mean. If you didn't see that, man, go back and watch. But anyway, that's going to be week 13. Week 14, and this is going to be our final game of the season. We face off against the Pitt Panthers. And look, man, 9-4 and four last year. Pitt is one of those schools that have definitely accelerated their program. But so have we. And that right there is going to be our 2024 Sharks schedule, man. A lot of good teams on that list. But we got a good team right here in Seattle, too. So they are going to have to come and prove that to us. You got to show us on the field. Then, man, we take a look at Week 16, the ACC Championship, where hopefully we'll be playing for that ACC Championship at the end of the year, man. If all, if all goes well, that will be us. But now, man, the moment I know a lot of you have been waiting for. Let's take a look at this brand new Blue Shark roster. When we get into our quarterback room and our new starting quarterback, the freshman, Xavier, a.k.a. Moses Malone. Looking to lead this Shark team to a bright new future. Then behind him, we got Steven Stewart, man. Looking to make an impact if the time comes. And then finishing up that quarterback room, we got Jamarcus Thurman. Then, man, as we take a look at our running backs, we got Cordell Rush, man. Big 2-3. Then we take a look at the second year, man. Tay Ray looking to pick up where he left off last season. Then we see Just Incredible, the big-time return man. Looking to make an impact on special teams. Then we take a look at our lone fullback, Terrence James. So now, man, we get to our receivers when we get Billy Goat, the junior, looking to lead this receiving group. Now we get a look at some of our freshmen, man, starting with Christian Bates, the shifty wide receiver. Next, we see another freshman looking to make an impact, Malik Austin. Next, we see another Under Armour All-American, Gabriel Benjamin. Next, man, we see another shifty freshman, Kylan Crossley. And then we see second year man, Alex Hummel. Now, man, we get into the tight end group where we start with 7-11 Jackson coming back for year two. And then we get another All-American freshman, Jay Dean, looking to make an impact in this tight end room. Now shifting gears to the old line, man, we see Orlando Matthews, the starting left tackle, big time freshman. And then alongside him, man, we see Vontae Lyles holding it down at left guard. So look, man, as we finish up taking a look at the offensive line, we just kind of review our offense thus far, man. And as you can see, we got a ton of freshmen looking to make an impact in this Blue Shark offense. And we just got to find different ways to get everybody involved. But this should definitely be an exciting group. And so now with that, it is time to take a look at the defense. Starting on the DN, big time playmaking Nehemiah Hood, the absolute game breaker, looking to be a leader on this defense. Then on the other side, we got big number 99, Max Matrix. Then we get a look at another incoming freshman, Phantom Cruz. Then we get to the D-Tackle group, man, and we got Jimbo Valentine, the sophomore, followed by T-Country, Big Country. Then we see Isaiah Tyler coming back for year two, big number 92, man. And then we get a look at Alan Krause. And then, man, taking a look at our linebacking group, we got DJ Outlaw. We see a new freshman, D. Hemi. Then we get a look at the highly anticipated freshman, Solomon Beaumont. Then returning for a second year, we see Jamal Carter. Another second year guy, Steve Strong. Then, man, to finish up this linebacking group, we get a transfer from Sam Houston and is actually the brother of Kylan Crossley, Kennard Crossley Jr. So now, man, we get to the DB, starting with LB States, who had a huge first year and is looking to do even more in year two. Then we see the dynamic freshman, Tim Flowers, coming in for year one, man, looking to make a big impact. Then we get another big time freshman, King Triton, looking to put these receivers on the island in year one, man. Then we get to the sophomore, the little guy with a lot of heart, Derrickson Rodriguez Diaz. Then to finish up the cornerback group, we got second year man, Nico Dean. Now getting to the safeties, we got first year freshman, John Shannon. And then finishing up this defensive group, we got the sophomore safety, Swagate Jenkins. And then last, but certainly not least, man, we got the new kicker, the freshman kicker, Zayden Upright. So that right there is your 2024 Seattle Blue Sox roster. And I gotta say, man, I like what I'm seeing so far. And speaking of seeing so far, man, you might've noticed, obviously there's some names missing off of this roster list, but we got a little bit of an update on some of these guys man so we already know in the scandal we lost five seattle blue shark players now the board of athletics president theophilus cash money had to do what he had to do we had to let them guys go they could not play for seattle but the ncaa did say that they would have one more year of eligibility and we also learned that the former quarterback coach for the seattle sharks would take a new job for a new team in the acc the beaumont black panthers and in a statement from coach speedman he left a cryptic message saying he would be bringing some dogs with him and so in a recent g3sn update titled last chance you we learned that not only will the five players in the seattle scandal be back in ncaa but they will be playing for the Beaumont Black Panthers and Coach Melvin Speed. So this is a huge update, man. 
because not only are we going to see some of the best players in all of college football last year come back to the game, but we're going to see them now playing for our former coach. And so this is going to be a dynamic that we'll be following along with throughout the season. And we're actually going to get a look at some of these players, man, starting with our former quarterback, Joe Lovelady rocking that new purple uniform and some more shocking news man the former running back trey vincent for seattle who transferred to oklahoma decided that he wanted to play his senior year with some familiar faces and try to put up some big numbers so we will see him at beaumont university as well and then we get a look at what's arguably probably seattle's greatest player big time baby megatron jared glover and this is a guy who many thought should have won the heisman last year but he's gonna have a chance to do it just not gonna be in Seattle blue. So then we also see the dynamic playmaker Dallas Higgins and it doesn't stop there, man. The big time freshman of last year for Seattle, Jalen Gray decides to transfer amidst everything going on. Sources say that Joe Lovelady may have had something to do with it, promising big numbers, but we'll definitely have to see from the sophomore this year, man. And then another guy involved in the Seattle scandal, Deuce McGee will now be playing for the Beaumont Black Panthers, rocking that number eight. And then finally, we see Rodney Edwards, the big time safety dual threat player, will be finishing his senior year at Beaumont University. So there are a lot of updates and there is a lot that we will have to keep track of, but this should be good, man. So we will be keeping a close eye on the Beaumont Black Panthers this upcoming season. And with that being said, that opens the door up for recruiting, man. If you want to be a part of this series, if you want to be a part of the upcoming season, you now have a little bit of choice. You can either play for Seattle or you can play for Beaumont University. It is up to you. We're gonna be following both teams closely, man. And so this is gonna be a whole lot of fun. I told you, we're gonna have a whole lot to get into and we're gonna have a whole lot of fun with this game. And this is part of it. And so there is more to come. So let me know. So now, man, we get to look at the stacked ACC conference where we got our beloved Seattle University and we got the new team, the Beaumont University Black Panthers. And uh, listen, man, this is going to be a whole lot of fun. This should be a really interesting season. Season three is going to be one for the books. But right now, man, everything is dead even. Zero zeros across the board. So like I said, man, season three is going to be one for the books. So now we know the team. We know the ops. It is time to get this thing started. We are getting ready to get into our season opener against Florida State on the road. This game will show us what we're made of, man. And miss all the adversity, all the scandals, the changes. This game is what we've been waiting on, man. So we got a lot of new faces. We got some old faces as well. But listen, man, this is the team of right now. So without any further introduction or delay, let's get to it. Shark Nation, you know what time it is. It's game time. Welcome to Tallahassee, Florida, and Don Campbell Stadium, home to some great Heisman Trophy winners, legendary coaches, and today the Seminole War Chant will be rocking this place. Today, we have one of those games that tests your focus. Top 25 team against an unranked opponent. Can you take care of business? As we'll see a squad from the ACC, a team ready to put on a show taking on the 11th ranked team in the land, the Florida State Seminole. For EA Sports College Football, I'm Reese Davis, David Pollock, and Jesse Palmer with me. Guys, it's time to get it going. Shark Nation, it is time. You can feel the intensity, the electricity in the air. The kick is up and we are underway as Justin Incredible gets ready to return this kick and he's going to take it out of the own end zone and get to about the 15. And so now we're going to get our first look at this brand new Seattle Blue Shark offense led by the freshman quarterback Xavier, AKA Moses Malone. And so here we go, man, as we take the field, starting on our own 15, we're gonna go with a handoff out of the shotgun to Rush, who takes some room up the middle. He makes one man miss and he's still running and he's finally brought down at the 35. And that right there is exactly how we wanted to start this game. We ripped off a 20 yard run. Rush just finding some space right up the middle, man. So it's now first and 10 on the 35 after that huge run by Rush. And we're going to go back in shock and get another handoff to Tay Ray this time, who gets a good gain of six right there. And so the Sharks right now are finding, finding it rather easy to run the football, going right up the middle on back-to-back -back carries. So on second and four, Malone's going to go with an RPO to Benjamin off to the right-hand side, who gets near the first down marker, but not quite there. And they mark him just short. So it's going to be third and one. And this Florida State crowd is on their feet and making it extremely difficult 
to hear anything. This is the number seventh ranked toughest crowd in the nation, and they are definitely showing that right now. And so here we go, man. Third and one. We are in shotgun. Malone is going to take the snap. He's going to hand off to Rush. Rush is going to find some space up the middle. He's still running. He finally gets brought down after getting past the 50 all the way down to the 46. So another nice run by Rush right there, who is looking pretty good so far in this opening drive. As he gets another carry and makes a man touch earth and picks up another first down. And Rush right now is having himself a drive. And right now, man, this Sark's offense is looking good. Moving the football with relative ease as we're on the 35 and looking to go score on our first drive. We see Malone drop back. He is under pressure in that pocket. He's going to get sacked in the backfield. That's going to be a loss of six yards right there. And there we go, man. Just seeing the quarterback, our new freshman, maybe taking it a touch too long. And with a defense like FSU has, you just cannot wait that long with the football. So that's going to make it second and 16. And we got Ray and Rush in the backfield. But we're going to go with a quick screen to Billy Go. And Billy Go has some room. But he's going to get brought down after a short gain of three. So it's now third and 13 on the what was a good drive. And this crowd is making some noise as Malone drops back the pass. He's rolling off to his left. He's looking over the top to Jackson. And Jackson's going to come down with the catch. And he's going to moss the cornerback for the Sharks' first touchdown of season three as he's hitting his little dance in the end zone. And this FSU crowd has almost done stunned silent as the Sharks strike first on the opening drive. What a pass from the freshman quarterback, Xavier Moses Malone, rolling off to his left, making the throw on the run. And then 7-11 Jackson just came out of nowhere with the insane grab. And we'll put the Sharks on the board for the first time this year. And right here, we just do a little quality of life check because that seemed like it was too easy for the freshman quarterback. We are on Heisman, so he is just like that. And then here we go. We get our first look at Zayden upright with the extra point attempt. The kick is up, and the kick is good. And the Sharks are up early in this game, 7 nothing after a beautiful drive. That right there is exactly how we wanted to start this season, man. Go down the field and score on the number 11th team in the nation. Nonetheless, we are feeling really good right now. As we can see, the Shark Nation has traveled to FSU Stadium. And we got our student section right there as we kick off. And Upright's going to boot that thing all the way into the end zone for a touchback, which is something we definitely needed from last year. But now we get a look at some dynamic players for Florida, Malik Benson, and then one of our own LB States. going to be a matchup that's going to be interesting to watch throughout this game. But now we see FSU take the field for the first time. And this Shark defense get on the field as they go with a handoff to their running back, who's going to get a nice gain of about six right there before he was brought down by the freshman Beaumont. And so just like the offense, man, we're going to see a whole lot of new faces on the defensive side of the football, Beaumont being one of those. But on second and four, man, Florida State's going to go with a handoff to Williams, who's going to be brought down in the backfield by Jenkins, who came up and made a nice tackle. So it's now third and five, and the Sharks would love to get a stop right here on this first drive as they go with a draw play to Williams as Williams is going up the field. He found some space. He bounces off a tackle at the 50 and Williams is off to the races. He will not be caught. And the Seminoles respond in short order with a huge play from their running back, taking it all the way to the house. A 50 plus yard touchdown run. And somehow Williams was able to stay on his feet after it looked like he was surely boxed up. He broke off of a tackle, kept his feet, and then it was just, it was good night after that. He was not going to get caught. You can see right there, Rodriguez Diaz came up to make the tackle, but somehow just didn't come away with that tackle, man. And Williams is just going to stride it out into the end zone. And so there we go. This game right now has started off at a fast pace. It is now 7-7, seven to seven, and you better believe this FSU student section is going to make it loud in this stadium, man. So here we go. We have Credible set to return the kickoff yet again. He's going to take it out of the end zone and get brought down at the 12. So the Sharks will take the field again on offense. Looking to do the same thing we did on that first drive. Go down and get some points. So here we go, man. Malone and the offense take the field at the 12. We can see him start in shotgun as he's trying to call out some plays. And he's going to hand off to Russ yet again up the middle who gets a short gain of three right there. So right now, we're leaning heavily on the run game. It's worked well for us. And we get another three yards right there. This time, we're going to see Malone drop back the pass. He's under pressure. He's in his own end zone. But he's going to fire the Goat. And Goat's got some space. He gets to the 40 and almost all the way down to the 45. 
And here we go, man. Another really good display of the freshman's arm talent on the run, under pressure. Found an open receiver and made a big play, man. So here we go. First and 10. We're going to drop back to pass again. We're going to find Christian Bates over the middle. Who makes one man missing? And he's finally suplexed down at the 32. But that is a big gain for this Blue Shark offense. And right now, this offense is cooking with fire, boy. We are on the 32 looking to go down and score again. As we see 7-11 Jackson go in motion to the left. Malone in shotgun. Tay Ray to his right. And here we go. We see a handoff to Tay Ray. He's going to find some space up the middle. He's going to get a gain of five right there. So slowly and methodically just wearing down this FSU defense with the run game. As we see Tay Ray get another handoff off the middle as he muscles his way to the 19-yard line for a first down, moving them chains. And here we go. First and 10 on the 19. Malone's going to go RPO again. He's going to find base to the right-hand side. He gets to the 10. He gets to the 5. Cuts up and gets all the way to the 4-yard line, almost scoring on that play. So early, we see the freshman, Christian Bates, getting involved. We already know he is a shifty guy, and we want to try to get him to football in open space as much as we can. As we can see, he made number one look like a fool on that play. We love to see it. And if you are not excited about this new Shark offense, I don't know what's wrong with you. As we see Rush get the handoff and punch it in for six, and the Sharks go back up on top. And this Seattle Blue Shark team is looking good and shocking. The number 11 team in the nation, Florida State, this crowd has once again gone silent. No one expected what we are seeing right now from this Seattle Blue Shark offense other than the Seattle Blue Sharks themselves. We knew what we had in our locker room, but we just took time to show it on the field. And right now we're showing up and we are showing out. The Sharks go up 14-7 on the road against Florida State. And the Sharks right now are looking like they're going to pick up where they left off in season two, man. We were looking like we were going to have an undefeated season. We felt robbed of a really good season. But right now, we are looking really good as this kickoff is going to be taken out of the end zone. And then he is going to be tackled down at the 14. So we're going to see DJ Uiaga, Laley, and company take the field again. We already know the dangerous Williams as he gets another handoff to the right-hand side and gets a first down and then some and it gets brought down at the 26. So right now, the Sharks offense looking good. The Sharks defense might need some fine tuning as the run game is killing us right now. And then we see them go to the air with a nice pass over the right-hand side. Rodriguez Diaz was right there in coverage, but just a big height difference and just wasn't able to come up with that play. As we see the freshman though, King Triton coming up with a big time play on the marquee receiver for FSU. So that's a good sign right there in the secondary. So here we go, man. It is now second and 12. We are at a minute and 20 seconds to go in the first quarter. And we're going to see a jet sweep to the outside. He comes back inside and it gets met by a host of hungry sharks. They make the tackle. So it's now third and 11. And DJ is going to drop back to pass. He is under pressure. Max Matrix is right on him. He's moving the pocket. And then he's finally just going to throw this thing out of bounds. And that is going to be fourth and 11. And it's going to force the Seminoles to punt the football back to a dangerous and hot Sharks offense. So as FSU gets set to punt, we got the dangerous and speedy Tim Flowers back set to receive. But they are going to kick this out of bounds right at the 20. And so now we're going to see the offense take the field yet again. Starting from our own 20 men, the Sharks have a good opportunity right here to go up two scores early in this game on a number 11 team. So we see Malone is going to go in shotgun. He is under all types of pressure, and he's just going to get rid of this football, wisely throwing it out of bounds. And so now it's going to be second and 10. 52 seconds left to go in the first quarter, man. We're going to see a handoff to Rush, who's going to find some space up the middle, get a nice gain of five. Well, that's going to leave it at third and five as there's 30 seconds left to go in the first. And here we go, man. Malone drops back in shotgun. We got a quick screen off to Rush on the right-hand side. He's finding a whole lot of grass to run, and he tries to cut up field and gets brought down at the 35. So yet again, another first down and a great play call by Coach Hughes right there taking advantage of an over-aggressive FSU defense. And speaking of over-aggressive, we see Malone take a huge shot on a pass right there. Thankfully, that thing falls down to the turf. And we're nearing the end of the first quarter in this week one game, man. Sharks looking really good. One second left on the clock as we see Malone going shotgun. He's dropping back to pass. He's looking for a receiver over the middle, but he fumbles the football. Thankfully, Seattle recovers, but that is the second play in a row where we see Malone under fire, man. So we definitely going to pay attention to that as FSU will certainly ramp up their efforts on defense, man. After what was a blazing hot start from the Seattle Blue Sharks, man, we are looking really good. Up 14-7 
on the number 11th ranked team in the nation on their own turf. So here we go, man. After that big play, it is third and 23. And this is where we're going to see the freshman and what he's made of. But before that, man, we are going to get a false start. And this crowd noise is getting to the Sharks. Stadium post is at 100,000. And it's definitely taking its toll on our offense, man, being able to call plays. As we see, Malone's going to drop back to pass again. He's going to find Jackson over the middle for a huge gain. But it's not going to be enough for the first down. And that drive right there really was killed by the fumble and then the penalty after that. And so we are going to see our new kicker upright boot this thing off and get it all the way down to the 30. And so here we go, man. The Sharks defense is back on the field trying to keep this seminal offense quiet as Williams gets a handoff on the right-hand side and finds a whole lot of room to run for a 12-yard gain right there. So here we go. It's first and 10. Ball on the 41. DJ in shotgun. He's going to hand off to the right-hand side. And he's going to find some space and get all the way down to the 50. And they mark him just short of the first down marker. So it's going to be second and one. And the one thing we don't want to do is let this Florida State offense get on a roll because they can put up points in the short order, as we already know, as we make a huge stop right there on second down. That was Nehemiah Hood coming up with a huge tackle just before the sticks, man. So it's going to be third and inches. Can the Sharks get another stop right here at the 50? As they're going to go with a handoff to Williams, and he's going to be met by Steve Strong, who made a great tackle, but Williams just made an even better effort to stretch out across that first down marker. And that's going to be a first down for FSU. And so here we go. They're going to go with a handoff to the outside on first down, and he's going to find a whole lot of space and finally get chopped down, but he was able to pick up the first down. So this seminal offense is starting to heat up as we see them get first down after first down. And they got a man in motion. They're going to go with a handoff to the left-hand side to Williams again, who gets popped by Beaumont. But he picks up five, so it's another nice carry on the ground. And right now, this Sharks defense is bleeding, rushing yards. And we need to try to stop that as Williams puts the spin cycle on and sent the Sharks D lineman to the deep blue sea. My gosh. He didn't get much after the fact, but he definitely got a highlight out of that one. And so it's now going to be third and three on the 31. And they're going to go with a play action. Looking up to the right-hand side, over to the top. But States is right there to break up what was surely going to be a touchdown. Great play by the sophomore. And they're going to be forced to try for a 40-plus yard field goal attempt. And the kick is up. And the kick is good. And so they are going to go on the board, man. The Sharks hold off, though. Score is 14-10. to 10. Halfway through the second quarter, man. Sharks looking really good. So we get another kickoff as Credible is set to return out of his own end zone yet again. He's going to cut back to the right, find some space, and he cuts back to the left. And it was so close to breaking that thing. But that's where the Sharks will start off on the 22. As we go with another handoff to Rush, he's trying to cut to the outside, but it's not going to be able to get anywhere. And so it's going to be second and 10. So here we go. We see Malone in shotgun. He's got some time in the pocket. He's going to find Jackson over the middle yet again for a nice seven-yard reception. So it's now third and three. Four minutes and 27 seconds left in the second quarter. And Malone's going to drop back the pass again. He's scrambling off to the right-hand side. He is under pressure. He's looking for Goat. Goat's going to be there yet again. Nice throw right there by Malone. And that's a first down as we see Tay Ray get another carry and takes it all the way for a 13-yard gain right up the middle. And right now, man, this Sharks offense is looking unstoppable as we get all the way down to the 39. And we go with another handoff to Rush who picks up only a yard right there. So a second and nine, just over three minutes to go in this second quarter. Malone in shotgun, Tay Ray to his left. He's going quick screen to the left-hand side, and Ray's got the football. He's got some space to run. He gets the first down, and then gets brought down at the 28. So once again, we see this Sharks running back group making plays on the receiving side of the football as well, man. And here we go. We see Malone finding Tay Ray yet again for another catch. A good three-yard reception right there. And so it's now second and seven ball on the 25. The Sharks getting closer to that pay dirt as they try to go quick screen to Billy Gold on the left-hand side, but that was sniffed out and it was going to be a tackle for a loss. So it's now third and nine, and this crowd is on their feet, making it hard to hear as Malone drops back the pass. He's going to step up in the pocket. He's got some room to run. He's just going to take it himself. He gets the first down and then slides down at the 11 for a huge gain right there. And the freshman right there just showing some pocket presence, stepping up, avoiding the sack, and then getting the first down on top of that. So for a freshman, man, this kid is showing tremendous poise and playmaking ability. As we see Rush get a handoff yet again for a nice gain of three. And we are now inside the two-minute mark. 
And we're just going to go quick huddle as we try to catch the FSU defense off guard. And we're going to see Malone drop back the pass again. He's waiting. He's scrambling off to his right. He's got some time. He's going to find his way into the end zone. And the freshman does it again. That is touchdown number two. This time he does it on the ground with his feet. We just said how much poise he shows in the pocket. This time he found a lane. He took it and he's able to get the Sharks up on the board again, man. Xavier, a.k.a. Moses Malone, doing his thing. And right now, he's looking anything but like a freshman, man. Looking like a seasoned veteran out there. So after that big play, man, we line up the extra point attempt from upright. And it's up and it's good. And look, man, it might be time to sound the alarms because the Sharks are putting FSU on the upset alert. So here we go, man. Upright's going to boot this kickoff all the way into the end zone. And it's going to be kneeled down. So Uyaga, Laley, and company take the field at the 25, man. Looking for answers against this Shark defense. And they drop back the pass on the right-hand side, and it's almost picked off by Rodriguez-Diaz. And that would have been a huge play. Just couldn't quite haul that one in. Great play nonetheless. And so we're going to see a draw play to the right-hand side. And he's going to find some space. He's going to break one tackle, get past the 40, and he's finally dragged down and out of bounds by Shannon. And up to this point, man, that's probably one of the only critiques we can have about this Sharks team, man. The run defense has been leaky. And speaking of, man, we finally see them connect with a big-time pass over the middle for another first down, getting all the way down to the 36. So with a minute and 15 seconds left to go before halftime, the Seminoles are trying to march closer to that red zone and get more points on the board as they try to go with a quick swing to the right. But Rodriguez Diaz was there yet again. So here we go. It's going to be second and 10. They're in shotgun. They're going to drop back the pass, looking for a quick slant over the left. He's going to make the catch and get the first down, but takes a huge shot by Beaumont. So it's first and 10. Still in shotgun, gonna go with a pass, looking on the left-hand side, and he's gonna connect with his receiver. And Trident was right there, just needed to get his hands up. But anyway, they're gonna get all the way down to the four-yard line, 55 seconds left to go. They're going shotgun yet again. DJ under trouble. He was looking for a receiver in the back of the end zone, but DS makes an amazing diving play to stop that from being a touchdown. And this Blue Shark defense would really love to hold and only allow FSU to get a three-point field goal. But here we go, second and goal. They're looking to the left-hand side and are going to easily walk in with touchdown number two on the game. And he was wide open. So after a long drive, the Seminoles cap it off with a touchdown. And the score is now 21-16. to And they're going to line up the extra point attempt to try to make it 21-17. And we can see right there, just a the perfect play call. Running back into the end zone. Now they do convert the extra point attempt. So it's 21-17 to as we get the kickoff as we see Crossley set to take this one out of the end zone as he's going to cut up to the right-hand side. Breaks a tackle, almost found a little lane, but gets brought down at the 16-yard line. So this Blue Shark offense will take the field yet again as Malone is in shotgun. He's looking for a receiver on the right-hand side, and that was a dangerous throw so close to our own end zone. That would have surely been taken back to the house for six. Thankfully, he's a DB and not a receiver and dropped that pass. Anyway, we're going to see Rush get a handoff, and he's going up the middle, almost gets the first down. Probably should have just kept going up the field, but he's going to get stopped just short, and so it's going to be third and one. And here we go. Malone is alone in the backfield as he's going to drop back the pass. He's going to find Jackson over the middle. Jackson's got some space. Jackson's got some speed. Jackson's to the 40. He's to the 30, and he finally gets pushed out of bounds at the 30-yard line. What a huge gash play just before the end of halftime from the freshman to the big time tight end and Malone does it again since the blitz was coming just found the open receiver put it right on the numbers and then Jackson just did the rest man striding it out showing that extra burst of speed getting all the way down to the 30 yard line man so that right there was a huge play from the Sharks offense man getting all the way down to the 30 and Malone still in shotgun drops back to pass again blitz is coming to the right he's looking for his receiver and goat and goat is just not able to make the catch so it's going to be second and 10, still on the 30. 24 seconds left to go before halftime. The Sharks would love to put some more points on the board as we're going to go with a handoff to Rush up the right-hand side who gets all the way down to the 23, a good gain of seven. And the Sharks are going to burn a timeout and stop this clock with 20 seconds left to go. It's third and three. Still enough time to try to make a play for the end zone. And you can see we are in Zayden Upright's range. So we definitely just want to make sure we don't take a loss on this play and just play it safe if we have to. So here we go. Malone's going to drop back the pass. He is under pressure. He's going to take a sack. And FSU brought the house and got home. Number 11 right there almost went untouched. So that's going to force the Sharks to attempt a 47-yard field goal. But this is why we brought the freshman here to this campus. The kick is up, and the kick is good. 
47 yarder from the freshman extending that blue shark lead a little bit and what a kick from the freshman got all of his boot on that one outstanding kick right there from the freshman and we love to see that man our recruiting efforts have paid off upright might be the kicker of the future man he's doing it all right now kicking and punting and right now he's putting points on the board and right now man this fsu student section is in shock the sharks are up seven points on the number 11 ranked team in the nation going into halftime man as we squib this one and he's just going to be brought down and take us in the halftime and so here we go, man. The Sharks are in great position for an upset on the road, nonetheless, man. And a big part of that, as you can see, has come from the run game where FSU has more rushing yards, but we've just been a little bit more consistent and seen more results out of that with two rushing touchdowns, man. And so the Sharks looking to continue some of the success that we've had in this first half in the second half. So listen, the table is set, man. We have got a good opportunity to really put our names out there and make a statement to the ACC. We just need to finish this game off. And you can see, man, so far the offense has been rolling. The defense looked like we might have got tired there at the end of the first half, gave up some points. But, hey, all in all, I am not complaining, man. The Sharks are looking really good in the season opener, and it's looking like we might shock the nation with a good win right here on the road. So we get set to kick off and get ready for the second half. Well, we're going to see Upright going to head and boot that thing all the way to the back of the end zone for another touchback. And the FSU offense will take the field to start this second half as they go with a handoff to the right-hand side. And Williams is going to break one tackle, but then Jenkins is going to come up to finish that play. So FSU starting this thing off with some aggression. A nice four-yard run right there as they're going to go with a quick screen to the left-hand side. And Trident was right there again. And they are playing with fire, trying to quick screen King Trident. That's the second time he almost got an interception. The next time he might take that thing to the house. So that makes it third and six on their own 29, man. We're going to see them drop back to pass. He's got a clean pocket. Looking to the right-hand side, he finds his tight end, but he steps out of bounds just short of the first down marker. And so for the first possession of the second half, the Seminoles are going to go ahead and punt this thing back off to the Sharks. Where we see Flowers is awaiting the punt. He's going to try to make something happen with this one as he cuts out to the outside. But he's going to get brought down at the 22. And that's where we'll see the hot freshman Malone and company take the field again as we see Rush get a handoff and makes a nice move for a short gain of three. So it's going to be second and seven on the 26. Now as we see another handoff go to Ray. He's got some space up the middle. Gets the first down and then some more on top of that. Getting all the way down to the 38. And the Sharks are going to try to go no huddle on this one and try to catch FSU off guard. This stadium is making it hard to make adjustments. So here we go, man. We're going to go with another handoff to Ray this time, but they were prepared for it. It's going to be a loss of one on that play. So like we already knew coming into this game, man, this atmosphere was going to be insane. And right there, you can see some of the effects of that could barely get our play off. But here we go, man. It's going to be second and 11. We're going to go quick screen to the right-hand side to Tay Ray, who's got some room. He's got some space. And he's looking to get to that first down marker. He's going to get brought down just short. So that makes it third and one, man. Malone still in shotgun with rush to his right. They're going to go with a read option, and Malone's going to keep. He's got some space to the left-hand side. And say he's just going to wisely slide down and get the first down and move the chains. So here we go. Sharks are now across the 50 on the 46 as they're going to go with a pass. And Malone is looking to the left-hand side, down the field to go, and he's going up for the catch but was not able to come away with it. So a second and 10 ball on the 46. Four minutes and 45 seconds left to go in the third quarter. As we see a quick screen off to the right-hand side to Benjamin, who's got a little bit of room to run. He's still running. He's getting all the way down to the 20, to 15, and then gets pushed out at the 13. Nice play right there from the freshman, showing some speed after that quick screen. And here we go, man. We saw some flashes in the Under Armour All-American game from Benjamin, man. Had a really nice game and showing what he can do for the Sharks offense. And after that nice play, man, we're going to see the Sharks stay in shotgun. Looking to pass. We're going to find Bates over the middle for a three-yard catch. So here we go, man. The Sharks inching closer and closer to that end zone. Second and seven ball on the 10. We're going to go to handoff to Tay Ray, who goes up the middle and picks up two. So that makes it third and five now. Sharks are knocking on the door, trying to go down and score again. As we see, Bates is going to go in motion from left to right. Malone still in shotgun with rush to his right. He takes a snap. He's got some time. He's going to step up in the pocket. He's going to run, but then he decided to throw to go. Who was open but drops the catch in the back of the end zone. So the Sharks are going to be forced to go for what should be a chip shot field goal, but it is missed to the left. And that comes as a surprise 
from upright. We already seen him hit a 48 yarder in this game, but he misses the chip shot just left. And maybe that's some of the freshman nerves coming out to play. But anyway, man, we turn the ball over on the 20. And instead of adding points to the board, we are back on defense as they go with a handoff to the left hand side that picks up nine and gets him all the way down to the 29. So here we go, man. We see DJ calling audibles at the line of scrimmage, trying to get his offense in the right position. And they're going to go with a reverse handoff to the right-hand side, but Hood is right there to meet him in the backfield and gets brought down for a loss of two. So that was a great read and reaction by Nehemiah Hood just to make sure he didn't get that edge. And we see his third down now. Is they going to go with a quick pass to the left-hand side and pick up that first down? He's brought down by Trident and States, so that moves the chains. And they get all the way down to the 34. Two minutes and 55 seconds left to go in the third. As we see a motion from the right-hand side, they're going to drop back the pass again. Looking over the middle, he finds his tight end and gets all the way down to the 50-yard line. So FSU is starting to move this football against the Sharks' defense. And on first down, we're going to see them go with a handoff to Williams to the left-hand side, who's going nowhere as Carter was right there to meet him. So now on second and 10, ball still on the 50-yard line. We're going to see him drop back the pass again. He's going to find a receiver over the middle, wide open, and gets all the way down to the 18. And the Sharks right now are looking gassed on defense as we are giving up chunk play after chunk play. And they're going to quick snap this one and go with the screen to the left-hand side. And he's looking for some space to run. And he gets brought down at the nine-yard line. So they mark him short of the first down. So it's going to be second in inches. And can this Sharks defense find some energy to get another stop in this red zone? So second in inches. And they're going to go with a pass. DJ surveying the field. He's going to find a receiver on the left-hand side. That's going to be good for a first down. As we see Jimbo Valentine is coming up with an apparent leg injury. And so hopefully it's just a little stinger, maybe some fatigue after this long drive. But anyway, man, it's going to be first and goal ball on the six. FSU moving the ball with no issues. As we see Williams take the carry to the left-hand side and walk right into the end zone. And with a good extra point, they are going to tie this ball game in a game that we felt like we had comfortably in hand. But a missed field goal turns into a touchdown on the other side and we might be looking at a tie ball game here in just a second as Williams tacks on touchdown number two for the day making it look easy so here we go Florida State lines up the extra point attempt the kick is up and the kick is good and we now have a tie ball game on our hands in the third quarter two minutes left and we get an update on Jimbo Valentine, and he has a partial ACL tear and will not be able to return for this game. And that is a huge blow to a defense that is already starting to show some signs of struggle. As we see, Crossley's going to take this kickoff out of the end zone and get down to the 16. And so right now, more than ever, we need this Sharks offense to try to come back and put some points on the board. As we see Malone go to the left-hand side to go, who's got a whole lot of space, and he's got a whole lot of room. And he is not going to get caught. And in one play, the Sharks go back on top in this game. And just like that, in a blink of an eye, the Sharks are back on top. And somehow, Goat created a whole world of separation between him and that cornerback. And all Malone had to do was just make sure he didn't overthrow him. And with how fast this guy is, that might not have been possible, man. He laid it up there perfectly. Exactly what the Sharks needed at this time, man. A huge play in this game demoralizing this FSU defense and giving the Sharks some life. The FSU team had come all the way back and tied this ball game up, but we quickly go back and score in one huge play. And it is now 31 to 24 with a minute and 49 seconds left to go in the third quarter as we kick off to the back of the end zone yet again for a touchback. And listen, while we'll take the one play touchdown drive, our defense is right back on this field with little rest and we'll try to have to stop this hot Florida State offense, man. So after a short gain on first down, it's now second and eight ball on the 27. And they are gonna line up a shotgun as DJ surveying the field, so under pressure. He's looking to the left-hand side and that one right there, not sure if he got his feet in bounds. They are gonna actually go to the booth and review this play. It looked like States might've been able to get in there and make the play, but they do say he kept his feet in bounds. So it's gonna be first and 10, man, at the 37. And here we go. DJ is going to drop back the pass again. He's going to find his tight end who breaks one tackle. He fumbles the football and it's recovered by the tight end. That was extremely close to being a Sharks turnover. I thought we might have recovered that one, but it looked like the tight end just barely got his hand in there and picked that football up as we see Williams get another good games on the right hand side. So it's now first and 10. They've crossed the 50 on the 48. A minute left to go in the third quarter. 
as we see them go play action. And then this time it's going to be intercepted by Rodriguez Diaz, who's got a whole lot of green, and he ain't going to be caught to the 10-yard line. He's high-stepping, but he gets brought down, but he does get into the end zone. A 44-yard pick six from the little guy. They tried to pick on him all game, and he finally comes back with the pick six. Big-time play from the little man. And we talked about the one-play drive from the offense and how the defense might be tired. Forget all of that. Rodriguez Diaz says, I don't want to hear no more talk about tired. I'm taking this thing back to the house. What a play from Rodriguez Diaz. They've been going with that quick screen all game long, and we said they're going to keep testing us, and it's a dangerous thing. And he finally showed them why you don't keep doing that. To the house for six. The Sharks up 14 with 40 seconds left to go in the third quarter. So all the momentum is now with Seattle, man. And we see after a seven yard first down run is second and three ball in the 32. And then we're going to see Max Matrix get in the backfield for a tackle for loss on the quarterback. So it's looking like the Sharks can do no wrong right now as we see with a screen to the left hand side. And Williams has got a whole lot of space. And Shannon is going to come up and make a really nice tackle on a good running back man in open space, getting them down at the 42. And so after that big play. It's first and 10 on the 42. Clock's still winding down. They're going to go with a handoff to Williams again, who's going to be met by Beaumont and brought down. And so that clock is winding down as we get closer and closer to the fourth quarter and closer and closer to a big-time upset. Seattle up 14 and putting the nation on upset alert. Man, the number 11 team in the nation is now walking on pins and needles on their own home field as Seattle has come in here and just punched them right in the mouth with big play after big play on offense and defense. Can the Sharks hold on in the fourth quarter and walk away with a huge week one victory? Well, we're going to find out. And on second down, they're going to go with a pass play to the right-hand side that gets about six. So it's going to be third and inches on the 48. Can the Sharks come up with yet another big time stop, big time turnover as they go with a reverse to the left hand side and it's going to be brought down and stopped. Big time country, T country comes up with a huge tackle just before the sticks is fourth and inches and they're going to go hurry up and try to go with a handoff to the right hand side and he's going to be met in the backfield and it's going to be a turnover on downs. The Sharks defense holds strong again. Talking about fatigue in the second half from the defense. I think they might have hurt me because they have turned the heat up another level. So now the Sharks offense is going to take over at the 49 as Russ gets the handoff and gets up and just back to the line of scrimmage. And at this point, that's got to be part of the game plan to run this clock down as much as we can as we see another run to the right-hand side. And Russ is going to find some space and get a nine-yard run, getting all the way down to the 42, and it's now third and one. And to the surprise of no one, we see another carry from Rush up the middle for a huge game, getting down to the 35, and more importantly, taking more time off of that clock. And with each second that runs off the clock, FSU is looking at the seal of their fate. So on first and 10, we're actually going to see Malone drop back to pass this time. He's under pressure. He's got to just get this ball away. And he does. He throws the ball out of bounds safely. And right there, we probably would have just loved to see another run as it was working really well as we go with another pass. Again, it's going to be a screen. And Rush has got a whole lot of room to the left-hand side. He's still going to be running. He's still running. And he finally gets pushed out of bounds at the 14. A great play right there, big time play. And hey, man, if we can go get a touchdown, forget ice on the clock, we'll just put more points on the board. In all game, we've seen Coach Hughes pull this play out of his back pocket, man. Whenever FSU is getting a little bit too aggressive, we just come out and hit him with the screen, and it's worked well all game. And we see Rush get another big time 21 yard play coming to the end of a game like this when we really could use some more points just to give us that extra cushion. So here we go, man. Ball on the 14. We're going to go with a play action, and we're going to look over the middle. And this time, Malone got a little bit too greedy, and that is going to be intercepted by Kirkland. And right there, coming into the Seattle program, we knew that Malone was a little overzealous with his arm. He has a strong arm. He has extremely precise accuracy, but sometimes he can be overconfident. And right there, at a time... Well, we probably could have put this game away. We see the freshman just making a freshman mistake. Bad throw right there. It results in an interception. So FSU takes over on the 20 as they make the connection on first down for four yards. So here we go. We are going to have to lean on our defense again. We got a nice little lead right here, but we're going to need to be able to sustain it. FSU has the potential to go 
in one play down and score. We've seen it happen already in this game. So now we are leaning on this Blue Shark defense, who has held up, might I add, so far in this game, man. As we see, DJ's going to drive back the pass again. He's going to find a receiver with a ton of space on the right-hand side. And they're going to get all the way down to the 44-yard line and get out of bounds to stop that clock. So on first and 10 on the 44, they're going to go with a quick screen to the left-hand side. Steve Strong is going to be right there, right on Williams as soon as he caught the ball and limits that play to only two yards. And so the clock keeps running on this drive as well, man. It's going to be second and eight ball on the 45. Just over three minutes to go in this fourth quarter as DJ is going to drop back the pass again. He's going to find his tight end to the left, but Carter is right there to keep him bottled up and keep him inbounds, keeping that clock running. So they're going to go turbo, no huddle, and it's going to be third and four. The Sharks could use a stop right here. As we see, he's going to drop back the pass. He's got some time. He's looking the left-hand side and right there. That was potential for another interception, but was just safely batted down. Could have been a big time play right there, but we play on. And this time they are going to find the connection and they're going to get all the way down to the 35. And they're going to keep going, no huddle, speeding this Sharks defense up. Can we get some pressure on this quarterback and try and throw him off his rhythm? As he's looking over the middle, he's not going to get any pressure this time. He's just going to find a wide open receiver all the way down at the 10 yard line. And so here we go. This is what we don't want. We do not want to let them go down here and score quickly and leave a bunch of time on this clock and try and tie up this game. So here we go, man. First and 10, ball on the 10. The Seminoles trying to protect home field, trying to protect their national ranking. As we see Carter come shooting in. And just when we said we needed to get some pressure on this quarterback, we get exactly that. That is a huge win for the defense on this drive. Not only does it set them back a little bit in the chains it keeps that clock running and forces them to use more time so a second and goal ball on the 18 dj's got a clean pocket he's gonna find his receiver on the right hand side again who gets all the way down to the five and that takes us into the two minute warning man the sharks are up 14 late in this game but the seminoles are knocking on the door and as as i say that dj finds his tight end over the middle for a touchdown making this only a one score game with a good extra point attempt and that kick is up and that kick is good so the sharks are now once again finding themselves you know needing to make some plays on offense and try and hold on to this slim lead now so malone and company are going to take the field again looks like they're going to stay in shotgun with tay ray to his right ray's going to get the handoff up the middle for two yards and that's going to force florida state to take their first time out in this fourth quarter and right now that's got to be the strategy just run the ball make them take their timeouts and we'll live with the results man we, we may just have to put this game in the hands of our defense unless we can get a big time run up the middle right here which tay ray had a lane but it just didn't hit the hole quick enough and it's going to get brought down but florida state does take their second time out and they only have one left so here we go, third and eight on our own 27, a minute 52 left to go. We're gonna hand off again and just play it safe. Not gonna get the first down, but Florida State does burn their last timeout of this game. So here we go, man, upright and set the punt. We could use a good one, but you can see the kick meter going crazy, but he gets off a decent punt past the 50 and it's gonna bounce and take a crazy bounce and it's gonna be touched by the offense and almost recovered and that would have been game over, but they narrowly escape and recover that fumble. So they will start with this ball on the 38 and look to try to go down and drive as they had a receiver on the right hand side that just couldn't make the connection. So there's a minute and 37 seconds left to go in this game. This is now in the hands of the Sharks defense. Can we get a stop and or a turnover late in this game? FSU has no timeouts. They make a connection right there. It's third and three. That clock is still running. They're going to go no huddle and line us up. We could use a big play from the defense right now. Get some pressure on this quarterback. As he lines up to throw, he's got some time over the middle. He finds a receiver that's still running, and he's going to get all the way down to the 26. And in short fashion, the Florida State offense is now within striking distance, and they're going to go hurry up again. And you got to imagine this defense is probably pretty tired. We are not getting any pressure on the quarterback, and he's going to find his receiver over the middle yet again. And we see an injury to our DN, Nehemiah Hood. This is a guy who we would be relying on in situations like this to try and put some pressure on that quarterback, man. So hopefully he can come back in this game. We will need everybody. And so here we're going to see they're going to go with a handoff to Williams on the left-hand side, and he's going to get all the way down to the four. 
And so there is only 56 seconds left to go. Can the Sharks hold on for one last stop? And they're going to go ahead and spike this football. So it's third and three ball on the four yard line. The Blue Sharks desperately looking for one last stop. So here we go. He's going to look for a receiver off to the right hand side and Jenkins went for the interception instead of the tackle. And the Seminoles tied this game up late, assuming they get the extra point. But man, that was a that was a risky move from Jenkins. I, I we would have loved to see him just go for that tackle. And just as we were saying, man, we were pleading for the Sharks defense to get a stop. They don't do it. And it's a tie ball game late in this fourth quarter, man. 48 seconds left to go. This is the stuff legends are made of, man. We got a hot quarterback in Moses Malone who made a big time mistake on the previous drive, man. Throwing that pick, can he make up for that and drive this Sharks offense down the field and put us in winning position as he's going to find Billy Gold on the left right hand side. He's going to find some space and get out of bounds at the 46. So coming into this game, we knew this is going to be a game to really show us what this team is made of. And right now we are seeing a resilient group, man. Time and time again, we get ourselves in situations and this offense has responded. The defense at times has responded. And right now, Malone and Billy Go have maybe made one of the biggest plays in this game so far, man. Getting us all the way down to the 46 and stopping that clock, giving us a good chance to go down and score and try to win this game, try to get a walk-off game. So here we go, man. This game is resting in the hands of Malone as he's going to find Jackson over the middle for a huge game. And he's going to get all the way down to the 28. And that right there could have very well sealed this game. Getting the Sharks all the way down to the 28. Malone just cool, calm, and collected in that pocket. Found his trusty tight end who's had a huge game all day. He's been wide open all day. Finds him yet again. And here we go. We're just going to go and try to line this thing up and set it up in the middle of the field. For our freshman kicker, Zayden Upright, this is his moment. And we've already seen him smash a 48-yarder, but then miss a 25-yard chip shot. So this most certainly will be the biggest kick of his career. The kick is up. It's lined up good. It's got the distance, and it is going in. And the Sharks take the lead late in the fourth. We go up by three with only a few seconds left to go in this game. Can you believe it? We came to Florida State's home field, and it's looking like we are getting ready to upset the number 11 ranked team in the nation. We already talked about last season, how we had a great season undefeated. We come into season three unranked in a new conference, no respect on our names, but we come out and we show the world what we are made of. We show the nation what we made of college football. And this program has just come in and taken down the number 11 team in the nation in week one on the road. This is Blue Sharks football. What a game, what a finish. Final score, 41 to 38, led by this man right here, Moses Malone, Xavier Malone, the big time freshman, 418 passing yards, three touchdowns, and man, the biggest drive in the fourth quarter, just executing to perfection. And like I said, man, this right here is what Blue Sharks football is all about. So season three, game one is in the books. So look, man, that is gonna go ahead and do it. As always, man, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and drop a like and subscribe to the channel today. And remember, a little bit every day goes a long way. So once you take that first step, don't look back. I'm IC3, 3000 to be exact. I hope I see you guys in the next one. And if I don't, I'm going to go ahead and run this one back.